Hey guys, it's Tammy. I'm here as promised. This is Teleplay Therapy Day 4. And I titled this one Tuning Into Attunement because I wanted to talk a little bit about attunement. I can't believe that it's only day four. I have been so impressed with everybody in the play therapy community and all of the valuable resources that everyone is giving to, to one another. So I thought I'd start with being a little silly and fun before we do some attunement things. So one of the things that I do often with game with clients is that we play the game fortunately, unfortunately. It's a really good way to put things in perspective. So as I was doing my own check-ins, I often look at life in terms of unfortunately and fortunately. So my fortunately today was that fortunately I was very excited to finally figure out a space in my house for it to be able to be a virtual playroom. Unfortunately, I realized that it is the cat space and very good chance a cat and a sandbox probably will not go well together. The cat will probably pee in the sandbox. So that was my little piece of things today. So I wanted to talk though a little bit about attunement and engagement with little ones. We did a little bit of TheraPlay yesterday. And uh, so one of the things I am doing also with kids, we talked yesterday about checking in with their fingers and with their toes. Sometimes we're just checking in right away with their breath. How are they feeling in their body? And we do this with all ages. Bessel van der Kolk, the very first thing that he does when he works with his clients is that he checks in and he checks in with their heart rate and how are they feeling. So we may start with doing a volcano breath and we may together breathe in and out. Before we go, smell the flowers, blow out the birthday candles, ways that we are doing it together. So one of my favorite things that I do, and I think it's really important when we are doing teleplay therapy with all of our clients to be able to have Play-Doh, model magic, clay, slime, in all of my presentations, I literally always have the Play-Doh out, and I recommend for people to have Play-Doh in their hands at all times. Uh, this is activating our sensory system. It's keeping them focused. It's keeping them alert and having something in their hands when we are having these sessions with them if they're not actively engaged in one of the activities. So, one of my favorite activities that I do regarding attunement is that I will, and I do this also in my training, so some of you guys may think it looks familiar. I may start, and, and I do this all the time for the parent and a child, or we could do it with an entire family. It's kind of like a follow the leader, so it's really mirroring. If anybody has any Play-Doh and wants to do it with me, feel free. So we may roll it, and then they would be following me rolling it. And then I may turn it more into a snake, right? And then I may pound it. And then the child's going to do it. And I am going to follow the child's lead. So, hi, Jane. Jane's been so good coming on every day. Uh, and then we will smush it. So when we were going back and forth and being able to mirror each other with the Play-Doh, it is a beautiful way to be in sync with them, to be attuned with them, to be connected with them. So this is very similar to mirroring. So we can also be doing mirroring. Have the child as well as yourself. So I may say, okay, you're, I'm, first they're going to be the mirror. So I may say, touch the nose. And we're just going to be following each other. I'm not sure how the following each other will work on um, online, but... I think it should. I haven't done this type of mirroring. I've been doing all of um, the Play-Doh. And there are so many great things to do with Play-Doh, and I will save some of those activities for another day. But if the family does not have Play-Doh, so many great ways to be able to um, 
make their own Play-Doh, send the family recipe of how to make your own Play-Doh. You might have all imagined, Jane, I wish you had your Play-Doh with you. There's edible Play-Doh. Dr. Jen Lefebvre did a whole thing on um, making peanut butter slime. So you could do peanut butter slime or make peanut butter Play-Doh. So first being able to cook and then being able to do that are super um, great ways to be able to engage. So I am going to end with... One other little activity that I've been ending with since we've been practicing breath is that I will have my little special candle. Hopefully it will turn on and I have the candle. And as a way that we're ending the session is I have them take a deep breath in and then they blow it out. And as they blow it out, they blow out the candle. So it's a beautiful way to have some closure. So I'm only doing small ones, and you guys will be hearing more. But I said I'd always finish with a book. There's so many. I have a million books on mindfulness and taking deep breaths. We're going to be doing some other ones coming up soon. But I thought I would actually show you this one because it's a great one for all of us. If you do not know it, it's called A World of Possibilities. And it's an exercise in mindfulness. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about this beautiful book because I really believe that this is a time right now that we all need to be practicing mindfulness. We all have to be in the present. We don't know what is happening and we need to be living in the here and now. And this is a time that we all need to be taking a pause, taking a pause in life and just seeing where things are going to take us. So I'm going to read a little bit to you. Do you know what a possibility is? A possibility is taking a pause just for you to stop and notice what you feel, think, and do. A pause is being in the moment and giving yourself a break. There's no way to to pause so it's hard. There's no wrong way to pause so it's hard to make a mistake. The pictures are really pretty in it. Some pauses are silent while some keep you moving. Pauses should be calming so things can start improving. Come let's explore a world of pausabilities. Take a breath deep from your belly and let it out slow. Relax your muscles until they feel like dough. Have something yummy and healthy to eat. Notice the flower. Is it a salty or a sweet? So like yesterday, we did listening to your body. These are also beautiful ways, um, different mindfulness activities we could be doing with kids. Notice the wind when it blows through your hair. Take a pause on your bed or in your soft chair. So how do we keep talking to children about all the different ways that they are pausing? Remember a funny story or a silly joke. Visit a furry friend and give them a stroke. Find someone you love and ask for a hug. Wrap yourself in a blanket so you feel comfy and snug. I'll read the last one. Oh, wait, I see that Jane said I had someone put lavender and Play-Doh and glitter over that. So that's awesome. So when we're doing Play-Doh, it's so great. And lavender and any essential oils to be able to bring out all of those senses. I love to do lavender with Play-Doh. And I have a great lavender Play-Doh recipe that I will try to, to remember. So I'm going to finish just the last sentence. Can you come up with other possibilities? Just let them flow. There are endless possibilities. What's in your world of possibilities? So how can we all take different moments to be able to pause and living in this moment and just expressing gratitude day by day? So just a couple quick ones. I will be on... Um, 
tomorrow. I wasn't going to do weekends, but we'll see what happens. Maybe I will. There's so many other things to share, and I just want to thank everybody for sharing all their awesomeness. But I can't recommend enough the importance of having slime or Play-Doh and having something on the in the kids' hands when they're doing this work. Okay, guys, take care and have an awesome day.